Unlike Michael Knowles, Dr. Carson is not a failed actor. Who wrote these questions? <laughs> we need to have some personnel conversations after this. Uh, I've, I've read a fair bit of your biography. I, I don't think I saw any Broadway or soft shoe on there, so I'm going to say... Wait, wait. I actually uh, have played in a movie. There's a movie called Stuck on You. Matt Damon and Greg Kinnear, they were yeah, yeah, joint yeah. twins. Yes. And I played the doctor who separated. Did you really? I did. I remember the movie. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen it in forever. Yeah. It was actually a lot of fun. I guess the difference, though, the, the reason why I think the answers are still right is, uh, you know, my biggest movies I, I was ever in, well, recently I was in one called Lady Ballers, which is a transvestite comedy, and the other one uh, was Holly Weird. It's probably the biggest movie. <laughs> that didn't didn't win Oscars. I right. quite like the movie, but you know, you're doing movies with Matt Damon and Greg Kinnear, so I guess you would have to say you're actually a rather successful actor. <laughs> well, Matt Damon said to me, he said, "I'll teach you how to act if you teach me brain surgery." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was it was it was fun, and there was one scene. With, uh, what was the woman's name? Eva Mendez. <laughs> oh, this little uh, sort of unknown actress. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they had to do several takes of it. And she had to push me uh, because of something that I said. And uh, she just kept pushing me and pushing me. And my wife was getting upset with her. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's better, though. Your wife must have been happier that it was Eva Mendez pushing you instead of Eva Mendez, you know, kissing you or something right. like that. that would have caused more problems. Exactly. Wow. And, you know, and then that wasn't the, the, the last thing. I also did an Alfred Hitchcock uh, in the Gifted Hands movie, the autobiographic movie. Where did you appear? Uh, actually, Candy and I appeared in a scene. We were walking by reading a chart while Cuba Gooding was scrubbing his hands. <laughs> is, I'll have to I'll have to watch with Hawkeyes next time. That's to, right. But wow, you know I, I it sounds like I'm flattering you. I really don't intend to, but you've got a long list of accomplishments in a lot of different fields. I didn't realize. I thought the one thing I might have on you is that I've been in movies. That's gone. That's <laughs> that's out too. Okay, uh, you're up. All right. In the long term, DEI is more dangerous for the country than another Joe Biden presidency. Hmm. I, I, what would you answer? I said, guess I'm going to say no. You're right. I agree. It's, it, would, it is they're, wrong. They're, they're both very dangerous. There's no question about that. But I'm not sure the country could survive another Joe Biden presidency. Yeah. The direction that we're going in so quickly and so destructively. Having said that, uh, DEI is antithetical to all the things that we worked for and so many people gave their lives for during the civil rights movement. And now we're trying to say, you know, this is more important. You know, and I'll tell you how silly it is. Um, last month, the uh, Glass Lewis people recommended against me on one of the boards I sit on because I'm the chairman of the nominating governance committee. And we only had 25% women. <laughs> so, but, but think about how silly this is. So they get rid of me, now they got a diversity problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait a they clearly didn't think even one step ahead here. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. There's also the, the fact that DEI, it's annoying, it's bad, it's, it's quite dangerous, but it's just a persistent liberal impulse that keeps cropping up over the ages. Whereas when we're talking about another Biden presidency, we're talking about pretty concrete political power to actually instantiate all of these kind of policies. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, to, it, it's even kind of difficult to separate the two as far as I can tell. It's just one is this annoying ideology that pervades a lot of corporate America. Right. The other is the power to implement it at a much larger scale. Well, to understand the Biden administration and their 
uh, things that they advocate, just read the book by Saul Alinsky, Rules for Radicals. You'll see it uh, very clearly denunciated yeah. in terms of what they're doing. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this is a long-term plan. This didn't start with Joe Biden. Uh, if you go back and you read the uh, congressional record for January the 10th, 1963, Congressman Herlong of Florida read into the record the 45 goals of communism in America. It's a lot of the stuff that's going on right now, gaining control of the school systems, indoctrinating the kids, gaining control of the media, spoon feeding the people which want them to know, making sexual perversion normal, natural, and healthy. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on, driving wedges between parents and children. It's really the reason that, um, that Khrushchev, more than 60 years ago, said to Eisenhower, your grandchildren, grandchildren will live under our system. Right, right. And uh, they had a long-term plan there. And we, the American people, are going to have to be smart enough to understand that we're being played. We're being manipulated. It's amazing how many of those points you mention focus on the destruction of the family, which is the subject of your new book, The Perilous exactly. Fight, Overcoming Our Culture's War on the American Family. It seems so obvious to me, though, that what, you know, there are different levels of politics. There's the right. national government, the state government, mm -hmm. but the, the fundamental unit of politics, it's not the individual. Politics means more than one person. The right. fundamental unit is the family. So if you want to really gut a political system, that's where you've got to focus your attention, and they have. Right. Well, that's the fundamental building block, the, the family to the community to the state to the nation. And if you can destroy that, which they have done a very good job of, they've been working on this for a long time. First of all, denigrating the role of fathers uh, in the family, and then uh, distorting the role of mothers, and uh, then you know taking the opinion of children who are immature and elevating that to the same level of someone who has a mature brain. It, it's really just uh, masterful what they've done. I have to give them credit. Hmm. Those who are trying to fundamentally change our country, they know what they're doing. Right. They've been pretty successful. They've actually. been very right. successful. Now it's my turn, I think. I think? Yes. Okay. That's right. With the exponential growth of artificial intelligence, it is likely that tasks such as driving, coding, and even surgery will be handled by robotics and AI in the next 20 years. That's pretty easy. Clear enough to me. Well, you know, that's, that's an area that's going to really blossom. Something they would have to be very careful about, though, because although it can be used for a lot of good things, you know we always have a tendency to pervert the use of good things and use them for bad areas. And particularly when I look at something like education, um, a combination of virtual reality and AI means that when a kid is studying the Peloponnesian War, he can be right there seeing what's going on. Uh, but by the same token, they can create their own world. And it's hard enough to get kids away from the Nintendo and the Playstations. I mean, how are you going to get them out of that? Right. Artificial world. When it's totally immersive. Uh, and then all of a sudden the Peloponnesian War might uh, not look quite like Thucydides said it looked. Although you will probably remember because you were there. You're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not sure, you know, there's, there's a movie about you, right? G Gifted Hands with right. Cuba Gooding Jr. Will a robot ever be... Will a robot ever match the ability of an excellent surgeon to perform surgery? Maybe of a, a yeah. mediocre surgeon. You think a robot will? It will. Absolutely. It'll, it'll go beyond the best surgeon uh, because it's so precise and it is able to take into consideration so many different things. Um, but right now, go with the good surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then I won't have a sip of my martini. Neither of us got it wrong. Sometimes, though, I say, if we get it wrong, we but, have to drink. But we get a sip anyway. That's right. <laughs> you get it right, you get to drink.